quarter four here in senior high class city i am glad you made it again in our class today i am teacher ernest and together let us discover life in the exciting world of biology if you are ready to learn please wash or sanitize your hands wear your face mask and stay on your respective learning area don't forget to bring with you your learning materials pen and notebook please behave listen and take note of the important concepts of our lesson for today Trivia time! Did you know that plants differ from animals in their manner of growth? As young animals mature, all parts of their bodies grow until they reach a genetically determined size for each species. Plant growth, on the other hand, continues throughout the lifespan of the plant and is restricted to certain marismatic tissue regions only. Are you excited for another amazing biological science adventure? Let's start! Before that, let's play a game called Choose the Best. Here are the mechanics of the activity. I will show you a statement. Choose the best answer in 5 seconds. Are you ready my dear student learners? Let's go! Number 1. Plants absorb nutrients through their blank. Letter A. Flowers. Letter B. Leaves. Letter C, stems, and letter D, roots. Very good. The correct answer is letter D, roots. Number two. The main mode of nutrition in plants is blank. Letter A, autotropic. Letter B, heterotropic. Letter C, saprophytic, and letter D, all of the above. Definitely, the correct answer is letter A, autotropic. Number 3. Which of the following statements is true about animal nutrition? Letter A. Omnivores eat only plants. Letter B. Carnivores eat other animals. Letter C. Herbivores consume both plants and animals. Letter D. All of the above. Correct. The correct answer is Letter B. Carnivores eat other animals. Number 4. Which of the following biological molecules is the basic source of energy for all animals? Letter A. Carbohydrates. Letter B. Lipids. Letter C. Nucleic acid. And letter D. Protein. If your answer is letter A, carbohydrates, then you are correct. Number 5. Which of the following biological molecules forms the framework of an animal's body? Letter A, carbohydrates. Letter B, lipids. Letter C, nucleic acid. And letter D, proteins. Absolutely. The correct answer is letter D, proteins. 
amazing, my Snapchat learners. Let us discuss this further, so stay focused and don't go away. Let's play another game called Fix the Word. Here are the mechanics of the activity. I will flash a jumbo letters and with it is its definition. Guess the jumbo letters in 10 seconds. Write your answer in the comment section below. Are you ready my dear Stephanie learners? Let's begin! Number 1. It is a muscular bag and it churns the food to help break it down mechanically as well as chemically. The correct answer is stomach. Number 2. It is the beginning of digestion. The correct answer is mouth. Number 3. Absorption of peptides, amino acids, glucose, fructose, fats, and water happens here. Answer is small intestine. Number four, it breaks down fats, processes proteins and carbohydrates, filtering and processing impurities, drugs and toxins, and generates glucose for short term energy. The correct answer is liver. And number five, it is one of the largest glands in the human body and it secretes a hormone called insulin. Very good. The correct answer is pancreas. The answer to this activity are the parts of the digestive system. Congratulations for getting the perfect score. For those who are not, you can make it again next time. Our lesson for today is plant and animal growth, development, and nutrition. And for the learning competency, the learner compares and contrasts the processes in plants and animals' growth, development, and nutrition. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to define development, differentiate embryonic development of a plant and animal, and compare and contrast the processes in plant and animal nutrition. In your previous lesson, you have learned about how plants and animals reproduce. In this lesson, you are going to learn how living organisms grow and develop. Development is the process by which a multicellular organism, beginning with a single cell, goes through a series of changes taking on successive forms that characterize its life cycle. After the egg is fertilized, it is called a zygote. And in the earliest stages of development, a plant or animal is called an embryo. Progress through a series of embryonic stages precedes emergence of the new, independent organism. Many organisms continue to develop throughout their lives, with development 
sissing only at death. According to Macmillan, Tiger.com. Here are the embryonic development of a simple animal by Theo Sophie, 2010 2012. Number one, at fertilization, an egg cell and a sperm cell fuse and create a zygote, which is a fertilized egg. After 24 hours, the first division takes place. Two equally big cells are created, each being half the size of the zygote. After that, the divisions occur approximately every 12 hours. The embryo stays spherical and does not grow. The stage of 16 to 64 cells is called a marula. Number two. Then the cells that lie inside migrate from the center to the periphery. Some cells die in the middle and there a cavity is formed. This cavity is filled with fluid. The embryo is now called a blastula and starts to grow. Number three. The cell divisions in the wall of the blastula continue and then some cells bend inwards to make a tube to the inside. This indentation looks as a finger and is pushed inwards. This happens at the spot that is called a blastophore, which is the opening of the vesicle. The embryo in the new breakthrough forms the mouth. Between these two, a tube is formed that will become the digestive tract. Between the digestive tract and the outer wall or skin, a body cavity is formed in which clumps of cells or the mesoderm are formed, out of which the organs will develop. Here, the embryonic development of a plant by Team Sophie 2010 2012. Number one, when plants flower, pollen will be carried from the stamens to the stigma of the pistil by wind, insect, or other animals. The pollen makes a tube through the style of the pistil to the egg cell in the ovary. Fertilization takes place and then follows the first division by which a small apical cell and a large basal cell are formed. Number two, the apical cell divides into four cells and forms a small ball. The basal cell ligates cells at the top. Apical clump of cell grows and forms a spherical ball. The lower part with the basal cell stops growing and dividing quite soon. This part is called the suspensor. This stage is called the globular stage of the embryo. Number three, the apical tissue grows sideways. The cotyledons are formed from this. At the same time, the tissue between the cotyledons and the suspensor differentiates into the growing point of the root or the apical root meristem. The growing point of the shoot or the apical shoot meristem and the connective vascular tissue. The cotyledons grow and fold out. The C is four. And number four, the seeds grow further and goes into rest. It starts to grow again only when it goes into the ground and the conditions are favorable for germination. One might speak of a double fertilization. First, the pollen fertilizes the egg. Then, the seed must fall or be sown onto the earth. 
Nutrition is defined as the process of providing and obtaining the food necessary for the health and growth of plants and animals. We have the plant nutrition. Essential elements are indispensable elements for plant growth. They are divided into macronutrients and micronutrients. The micronutrient plants require a carbon, nitrogen, hydrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. Important micronutrients include iron, manganese, boron, molybdenum, copper, zinc, chlorine, nickel, cobalt, silicon, and sodium. Adaptations of roots for mineral uptake by Mather S. 2007. Minerals enter a plant at its root system, and two mutualistic relationships assist roots in fulfilling this function. The air all around us contains about 78% nitrogen, but plants can make use of it. Most plants depend on bacteria in the soil to fix nitrogen. That is, the bacteria change atmospheric nitrogen to nitrate or ammonia, both of which plants can take up and use. Some plants such as legumes have roots colonized by bacteria that are able to take up atmospheric nitrogen and reduce it to form suitable for incorporation into organic compounds. The bacteria live in the root nodules and the plant supplies the bacteria with carbohydrates. The bacteria in turn furnish the plant with nitrogen compounds. Another mutualistic relationship involves fungi and most all plant roots. This association is called a mycorrhizal association. Literally, fungal roots. The hyphae of the fungus increase the surface area available for water uptake and break down organic matter, releasing inorganic nutrients that the plant can use. In return, the root furnishes the fungus with sugars and amino acid. Photosynthesis is the process by which green plants and certain organisms transform light energy into chemical energy. During photosynthesis, in green plants, light energy is captured and used to convert water, carbon dioxide, and minerals into oxygen, and energy-rich organic compounds. We have the animal nutrition. Animals obtain their nutrition from the consumption of other organisms. In the course of evolution, animals have formed ways to obtain process and digest food as heterotrophs. Generally, animals need carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins as basic organic compounds and supply of vitamins, minerals, and water as additional requirements. Carbohydrates serve as energy source in which the energy to form ATP or adenosine triphosphate is derived. Essential fatty acids and amino acids are obtained either from gut symbionts or direct food sources. 
vitamins, similar in plants, are organic compounds that are only needed in minute amounts, but essential for metabolic functions. Minerals are also needed for ion exchange, body component, and ATP production. Animals must convert these macromolecules into the simple molecules required for maintaining cellular functions, such as assembling new molecules, cells, and tissues. The conversion of the food consumed to the nutrients required is a multi-step process involving digestion and absorption. The process of mechanical digestion is relatively simple. It involves the physical breakdown of food but does not alter its chemical makeup. Chemical digestion, on the other hand, is a complex process that reduces food into its chemical building blocks, which are then absorbed to nourish the cells of the body. The Human Digestive System We have the mouth and esophagus. Digestion begins in the mouth. The food is ground up by the teeth and moistened with the saliva to make it easy to swallow. Saliva has a special chemical called an enzyme, which starts breaking down carbohydrates into sugars. One swallow, muscular contract. We have the stomach. The food passes through a sphincter or a small muscle ring into the stomach. Here, it is mixed with gastric juices. The stomach is a muscular bag and it churns the food to help break it down mechanically as well as chemically. The food is then squeezed through a second sphincter into the first part of the small intestine called the wooden room. We have the small intestine. Once in the wooden room, the food is mixed with more digestive enzymes from the pancreas and bile from the liver. Food is then squeezed into the lower parts of the small intestine called jejunum and the ileum. Nutrients are absorbed from the ileum which is lined always with millions of finger-like projections called villi. Each venus is connected to a mesh of capillaries. This is how nutrients pass into the bloodstream. The pancreas. The pancreas is one of the largest glands in the human body, as well as digestive juices. It secretes a hormone called insulin. Insulin helps to regulate the amount of sugar in the blood. Diabetes is a condition caused by problems with insulin production. The liver The liver has a number of different roles in the body, including breaking down fats, using bile stored in the gallbladder, processing proteins and carbohydrates, filtering and processing impurities, drugs and toxins, and generation of glucose for short-term energy needs for other compounds like lactate and amino acids. And the large intestines. Once all the nutrients have been absorbed, the waste is moved into the large intestine or bowel. Water is removed and the waste or the feces is stored in the rectum. It can then be passed out of the body through the anus. Did you learn about the plant and animal growth, development, and nutrition? Yes! That's what is the I hope you
you appreciate how organisms grow and develop. Based on your understanding, what do you think it is important for organisms to grow and develop? I will give you 25 seconds to type your answers on the chat box below. may have important consequences in its ability to adapt to the environment, hence may play a role in evolution. Now, we have already discovered how the plant and animal growth, development, and nutrition. Let us check your knowledge by answering this multiple choice Choose the correct answer for each question. Bring out your pen and quiz notebook. And let's begin. Are you ready? Let's start! Number 1. The earliest stages of development in a plant or animal is called blank. Letter A. Blastula. Letter B. Embryo. Letter C. Morula and letter D Zygote You're right! The answer is letter B Embryo Number 2 Which of the following terms is also called as the opening of the vesicle? Letter A Blastopore Letter B Blastula Letter C Gastrula and letter D Morula Correct! The answer is letter A Blastopore Number 3 What part of the digestive system is the odenum usually found? Letter A Esophagus Letter B Liver Letter C Small intestine and letter D is stomach. You're right! The answer is letter D is stomach. Number 4. What part of the digestive system secretes a hormone called insulin? Letter A. Esophagus. Letter B. Liver. Letter C. Pancreas. And letter D. Large intestine. Very good! The answer is letter C, pancreas. And number 5. Which of the following processes happens in small intestines? Letter A. Chemical digestion of proteins and fats. Letter B. Chemical digestion of carbohydrates and fats. Letter C. Absorption of water, mineral, vitamins and organic molecules. And letter D. Chemical digestion of carbohydrates, fats, polypeptides, and nucleic acid. You got it right. The answer is letter D. Chemical digestion of carbohydrates, fats, polypeptides, and nucleic acid. To sum up, growth simply means an increase in size and mass of a particular organism over a period of time. Development is defined as a process wherein a particular organism transforms itself from a lone cell into a more complicated multicellular organism. Congratulations, my dear Stanley I hope that you learned a lot today. Once again, I am your energetic teacher saying eagerness to learn will lead you
you in the fulfillment of your dreams. See you in the next episode.